Hello everybody and welcome back to the Director of Football Sabotage with Lovato. Now we're at the beginning of Season 7. It's been an incredibly busy summer transfer window. And honestly, it's probably my favourite transfer window on FM19, hands down. So of course we're going to start on the transfer history page where we have made quite a lot of sales and quite a lot of incomings. So we'll quickly address the sales. Brian Galvan has left the club and he's joined that Turkish side with the name that I will never be able to pronounce for £5 million. Brian, he was a decent player and he, honestly he could have found himself in our squad quite easily going into this season. But I actually needed to free up a non-EU spot in my squad and he was the only player I could sell to be able to free up that spot so he has been sacrificed a little bit but in terms of five million pounds for him considering we signed him on a free transfer i think it's not a bad bit of business nicholas shea picasa has joined tenerife for a 3.1 million pounds deal during the last season he did want to leave due to lack of playing time he had actually rescinded his transfer request as he got more game time due to injury but as you can see he's just he, he's been quite awful for us in Serie A over the years he had a decent season now where he got 11 goals in 36 games but three goals in 14 starts for us last season not really good enough so I'm quite glad to say the back of him honestly Anna Koric has joined Velocano for 2.5 million pounds a bit disappointing uh, Anna Koric was for me Obviously, he's been fantastic on previous editions of FM and was signed him for £1.4 million from Roma a couple of seasons ago. But I think just due to our poor quality of squad, he's found it difficult while playing on our side. His first season was actually OK, one goal, nine assists. Second season was OK as well, but five goals, four assists in 29 games. It's not the sort of stats you need for what you would consider an elite Serie A player. And his potential was pretty much gone by this point at the age of 27. Ronaldo Vieira had gone, he'd been whinging all last season because he wasn't getting the first team football. £1.4 million pounds to Perugia. He would have been okay for me in terms of a decent backup option, but he was on 10 grand a week, so I'm not too disappointed at seeing him be sold. We signed him in the January transfer window when we, did, when we decided to take over the transfer responsibilities for £91,000, so a good bit of profit there. But as you can see by his average ratings, he didn't pull up any trees whilst he was at Livorno. Nicola Maroos left the club for £500,000. I just needed to get him off the wage bill, to be honest with you. 20 grand a week. He is Italian and he was decent. But, yeah, as you'll see further down the line, I'll explain why I was selling all my left-backs. Hidetura Vest left for £475,000 and joined Spezia. A decent backup option again that we brought in for a free transfer at the beginning of last season. But he just found himself surplus to requirements. Sabin Marino will probably go down as the worst sign in our director of football ever did £2 million in the January that we decided to take the transfers over but he'd signed obviously before we'd made that decision and this was one of the main reasons why I made that decision because he was such a poor sign and naturally a left winger that could play a striker, a striker that we didn't need um, and he, I think he made one appearance for us in his entire career, he did and I'm, I'm just glad to get him out of the club. David Agazi, this was a little bit of a disappointment one, £20,000 to Spezia. No one was really interested and he wasn't in my first team plans at all. He's been at Livorno since we started and he is a well-rounded defensive midfielder to be honest with you. I probably could have kept him around but he was unhappy as well, he wanted to be transferred and he's played a lot of games for us so I'm a little bit sad to see him go. Dominico Mungo I think was one of our director of football's first signings on a free transfer in the second season he did okay for us when he got game time but he's a very limited central midfielder so glad to get him off the books and the rest of these lads you'll probably have never seen alexander madsen the right back from norway we signed has went out on loan he wasn't going to get first team football this season and you'll see why so he's joined croton in syria so he's going to be playing top division football at the very least and Leonardo Salerno is one of the centre-backs that came in and was straight into the first team basically because we needed him. And he's went out on loan to Citadella for the season. Uh, Palmer, sorry, not Citadella, for the season. Right, so that brings our total to £13 million that we've brought in in the transfers and we've spent 16 and a half. Let's have a look at who we've bought in. Rafa Pereira from FC Porto. He's a central midfielder Portuguese on incredibly low wages and he looks quite decently well-rounded and he's coming in as a backup option. Slabodan Fumic from AS Monaco, again a striker, well-rounded, backup option. Sinclair is an attacking midfielder from Arsenal, I believe he joined them on a free transfer a couple of seasons ago and he could find himself in and about the first team if our first choice attacking midfielder doesn't perform too well but initially at least he's brought in as a backup option. And now we'll move on to the free transfers and we've made 
some absolutely stupendous free transfers. Giorgio Kovacs from Vitorel for free. He's a three and a half star, four and a half star Romanian centre back. Obviously could link up really well with Carpano. He's not in the first 11 initially at the very least and you'll see why later. But he's a, a really solid centre half with obviously room to grow in terms of his mentals and things like that. But physically he's fantastic minus the natural fitness. All the defensive stats are there what you would need. And so hopefully I'm going to give him as much game time as possible. Johan Drian, a wonder kid, French defensive midfielder for free. What a bargain this guy was. He looks incredibly well-rounded. Physically, again, fantastic. Mentally fantastic. Technically, in the right places. A ball win midfielder, naturally, I am training to play in a defensive midfielder role, which I think will suit our system a little bit better. He's only 19 years old. Loads of time to grow. He's getting chucked straight in. Patrice Darian Schmidt. On a free transfer, if you remember him from the January transfer window, you know I was chasing this guy all season long. And he has decided to join the club. We've spent a lot of money bringing this guy in. He's on £50,000 per week on a first-team contract. I do believe he does have a minimum fee release clause. Or did I might know £28 million a minimum fee release clause. So I might need to renegotiate this contract during the season, depending how he performs this season. But he's just stupid. He's just fantastic. And I can't wait to see how we can... How we can perform in our first season. Mori Diara we signed from FC Lorient. He has went out and loaned to Citadella. He is a French right back. We're signing on free transfer. And as you can see he's incredibly well rounded for a 17 year old. And he's definitely one who if not next season. Maybe the season after will be in the first team. Robert Martinez was the reason why I had to sell Brian Galvan. He's a free transfer. And he is a left wing back who's getting trained as a left back. Now initially my thoughts in terms of the left back position were. I was going to maybe train Johnsgaard, not Johnsgaard, the Norwegian central midfielder to be a left back. He is already yellow there and he's green at the left wing back role. So you could definitely, I think he's got the versatility to be able to get to a perfect green there after a couple of seasons of playing in that position. But then this guy popped up on a free transfer and I just thought to hell with it. We'll sign him, we'll get him trained out and keep Johnsgaard in central midfield. And at this point as well, I didn't have that much money to be able to sign a central midfielder to replace Johnsgaard in that position. So he came at the perfect time and I think he'll be fantastic for us. He's a lot more attack minded than what we've had previously. Which is what I feel like we've been really struggling with in terms of creating chances. Our wing backs were just too defensive and not attack, uh, attack minded enough. And this guy definitely will be. Ruben Canedo was the reason I sold Nicola Maru. So Nicola Maru on £20,000 per week. He came up for two hundred grand. I compared the two attributes wise. And Ruben Canedo was a mile ahead of Nicola Maru in terms of his attributes. And now he's come in and he, my assistant rates him as a two and a half star player. I don't agree with that. Uh, when we scouted him it was more like three star, four star potential. And I think that, that probably suits the chemistry of our squad better. A three star player. So he's going to get plenty of game time. Uh, Martinez is currently oh, he's returning from injury. So Ruben Canedo will be starting in today's game. So we'll see how he gets on. Hans Christian Cavamia from Rosenborg for £350,000. He's currently on loan at Spal as an 18 year old Norwegian striker. Uh, I just I'd signed this guy, I think it was in the March time when we still had a little bit of funds left, and I just thought, why not sign him? Because he had five star potential. If I could take it back, I probably would, because now I get a better look at him. I don't know if he'll make it that far, but we'll see how he gets on at Spal this season. Nenad Siric from a partisan for £425,000. He's an attacking midfielder. He is currently in our under 20s. No one is coming for a loan yet, which is ideally what I would like to do. Um, I might have to promote him to the first team because we are a little light on numbers. But for this, for the sort of cost we're paying here, this is the kind of guy that you're always going to make a profit on. Now this one might be a little bit controversial. Pericha Ivanovic, he is a right midfielder who I am trading as a right back. So as you can see, he was already yellow when I signed him at the right back position. And I was really, really struggling to find an attacking competent right back for decent value who was young and who had potential actually there wasn't any out there that i could afford there were all like 15 20 millions and all that sort of stuff and that's not the sort of money we've got so this guy popped up for 1.9 million pound from partisan and i thought ignore the mark and the tackle and the positioning he is perfect in every other sense and i've got him training as a right back and I've got him training on his defensive positioning, which will hopefully see his positioning and his marking improve rapidly. And I'm hoping his tackling will just improve over time naturally, as he's still only a three and a half star player, five star potential. Obviously at right back, 
that will sort of eat into his potential a little bit whilst he's training for a new position. But he's, I'm going to chuck him in. Uh, Belangiwoli is going to be second choice. This guy's going to be first choice. He needs the game time if he is to get uh, natural at the right back position. And I'm hoping, given time, he will be. Peter Rada for, from Sparta Prague for £4.5 million. This was a deal I agreed in, I think it was February time or March time. So I'd already agree this deal going into the summer transfer window. He's a 19-year-old Czech Republic centre-half with 19 caps for the national team already, which is fantastic. Physically, he's okay. Stamina's a little bit low, but that's fine. Pearson and acceleration's great. And we are, I, I am wanting to play with a higher line and the offside I want to play offsides and higher line, so having the pace of him and our Carpano will be absolutely pivotal, I think. Now let's address the elephant in the room. He's eight heading. Yes, it's disappointing. Yes, it is. You know, ideally you wouldn't want to sign this sort of player with eight heading. But given our circumstances financially, our reputation, what is on offer in the transfer market? It's the sort of thing I've just got to overlook and hope that it doesn't come back to bite me in the bum too much. And I'm sure he's, he's ahead and will improve given time. He's only 19 years old. We'll see how he gets on. He's six foot three. I'm not too worried. And finally, our biggest transfer of the summer came in the most problem of position attack and midfield. Claudio for 9.25 million is a Brazilian. Uh, Wonder Kid 9.25 million was a, a little bit of a bargain in my opinion. It was his minimum fee release clause, but it did take up a lot of our transfer budget. He's physically fantastic, mentally he's got it in the right places, technically he's getting there. 15 passing, 13 technique, 14 first touch and 12 dribbling is great. 16 vision is fantastic, 13 flair, hopefully that'll improve a little bit along with these decisions at a 12. But I'm hoping to see big things from this guy and of course he's going to be a starter. So unfortunately we do have some injuries to the squad. Skirbet's injured, Dullo's injured and Petras is injured going into the season. Um, but this is how I see our first 11 if everyone's fit, I say Dullo in goal, Ivanovic in at right back, Rada and Carpanu in at centre back, and Martinez in at left back, Drian, our French defence midfielder, in at defensive midfield, Hugo Fernandez and Nuts Johnsgaard in the centre, Claudio playing the attack midfield role, and Pierre Derian Schmidt and Zach playing up front. Now, I think at this point, you're not going to see any major squad overhauls ever again. You know, unless our director of football just decides to sell everybody and then I have to. You know, this the core of this team is young. It's got potential. Um, the Wonder Kids, they can improve massively. The, they've got the potential to be leading Serie A players at the very least, if not world-class players. So I think going into this season, we can feel very positive. Uh, maybe not so much in the first initial first half of the season. You know, we've made a lot of changes. The squad is very young. And I think more so than ever on Football Manager 2019, you need a bit of experience and a bit of um, leadership in your starting eleven, And having just a squad of wonder kids who are really young is not necessarily the best way to guarantee results. But I think it's the best way to guarantee Lavorno's progression due to how much financially we'll be able to gain if we do end up selling any of these guys. And just talking about last season a little bit more, I was a little bit disappointed in our tactics. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the Gigi press for the season. Our squad is incredibly physically capable um, so I'm going to start in the GG and press. I'll tinker with it as the season goes on to try and get better results. But I was just a little bit disappointed in my tactics overall last season. We have played one game already in the Italian Cup against Lecce at home. And we got knocked out of the Italian Cup. We actually got dominated off Lecce. They played really well. They are in Serie B. And we played a pretty much a first team squad. Uh, Patrice Derry and Schmidt gave us the lead in the fifth minute. But they equalised in the 88th. And then they won on penalties, so it wasn't a great start. Before today's episode, we are going to be playing Fiorentina at home in the opening game of the season. Obviously, we've got a lot to prove if we are to be... Uh, if we, I want to beat last season, so what did we get? Was it 7th? 6th? 8th? So we finished ninth last season on 53 points. So hopefully, with the additions that we've made and the potential of the squad going forward as the season goes on we'll get better and better and better and we'll just be able to win but this is the lineup that we're going to go with today we're going to start with Rodak and goal Ivanovic at right back Carpano Rada and Canedo completing the defense Drian Hugo Fernandez John's guard and Claudio in the diamond with Derry and Schmidt and Zach leading the line Fiorentina come at us with a 4-4-2 it's not often you see that in Syria Alberto Moreno Alessia and play Adjapong uh, Marco Benassi, all familiar names along with Sadebe. 
So it'll be an interesting first game and let's see how we get on in our opening game of Season 7. And we kick off at home. Uh, Fiorentina are a good side but I would expect us to be able to give them a good game and if not get a win, at least get a convincing draw. You know what I mean? Us on top but we'll just somehow manage to draw. As Fiorentina come forward on this left hand side with Alessi and play gets a ball in. Esposito was there. Oh my god, Canedo has he brought him down. Please ref. Come on VAR. Oh, it's being given. Canedo gets his yellow card. And that's why I want to start Martinez. Sadibi steps up. Rodak. Big, big save. He keeps us in the game two minutes in. Highlight now. And it might be an attack. Ivanovic plays it into Schmidt. Canedo on the edge. Gets dispossessed. He's having a poor game so far. And Ocampo can come away with it on the right hand side. Fiorentina. Great ball in. Alessian plays there. He gets his first goal of the season. Great assist. And a great counter attack by Fiorentina. Ruben Canedo is having a, the worst, worst start. Six minutes in. Uh, good play by them, great cross, great finish. Nothing the keeper can do about that first time volley. We need we need to up this, lads, come on. Another highlight, we're high up the pitch again, but we've been giving the ball away sloppily. Canedo to Zach, Claudio's there. And he puts his header just wide of the mark. Rada with a big kick up top. Zach's brought it down in the box. And there is no suggestion of an offside flag. And what a, what a first touch this was to take it away from the defender, bring it under control. And be able to get the first time strike in. There we'll go. Left footed finish into the far post. The defender slides in but he can't get it. A great free kick by Rada as well to set him away. Fantastic stuff. Free kick for Moss Carpano to take it. Goes well wide. So that brings us into half time 1-1. One, one. I am going to get Ruben Canedo off for Robert Martinez. He has passed a fitness test so he can play for today's game. I think it did suggest 60 minutes. So he's only going to get 45 so he should be okay. 25 minutes to go and the second half has started quite poorly. We'll probably look to make some changes. Who's struggling? We'll get Drian off and we'll get uh, Renoglia on. We'll set him to an anchor man. He'll be able to stabilise the defence and hopefully give us the opportunity to go attacking without worrying too much. Oh, Martinez, our left back, gets injured. <laughs> uh, Belangioli is going to come on at left back and play in that position. And the second half has been utterly awful and it looks like it's going to come to full time with neither side taking control of this game in the second half to get the win. And Livorno won, Fiorentina won. I think that would qualify as us pretty much dominating the match in terms of match stats but we're only getting a draw. I think that's good enough for us as we look to embed these young guys and get them familiar with this system. So in terms of the transfers and what that left us with actually, we actually still got £13 million and £100,000 to spend in the wages. Now, bear in mind, this was this was basically zero, the transfer budget. I had to squeeze every little bit out. A lot of the outs like Brian Galvan came quite late on. So all that money that came in, I didn't really have time to reinvest it by the time things had happened. So you might say our squad is a little slim. We've basically got two players for every position and no more. So we are going to struggle if people continue to get injured as Robert, oh, is he out? he's out for seven weeks. Our new left back is out for seven weeks. Brilliant. But yeah, so we've got plenty of money to spend in January should we need to do so. In terms of the next episode, I'm looking at maybe Sassuolo at home in October to kick us off this season. It'll give us a good few games to see how the squad is settling in. Anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you enjoy my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.